Yeah, South Africa wraps up uh, the annual Heritage Month uh, celebrations. We look at it from the perspective of its own impact on the South African community. The founder of the Mazisi Foundation Trust and wife of the Poet Laureate, Mazisi Kunene, Matabu Kunene, says, as, a div- as diverse as it is now, it seems that we should never forget the historical suffering of the African through centuries of colonial rule when their own culture was undermined. Mazisi Kunene believed from a very young age that a country with a long history of physical and intellectual enslavement would need a dual approach towards its total emancipation and is now termed decolonizing of the mind. Matabu Gunene joins us now to talk about this and his legacy. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. You can tell us about the foundation in just a moment, but obviously for those people who uh, don't know the Poet Laureate uh, Award, he, Professor Gunene, in his lifetime, he spent it in exile, but he pretty much started writing uh, about the Zulu culture and language from the age of 11. Yes, um, absolutely. Long before he even understood anything about politics, but it was his uh, upbringing in the village and, he, and the importance of uh, family participation and his interest in writing that really made him to be what he is today. Mm. And I'm very interested in something, just his critique in what he called an analytical survey of Zulu poetry, both traditional and modern. One of the things that he criticized was what he saw as the Zulu culture's uh, tendency to be Eurocentric, as he called it, in its approach to the stylistic techniques. So tell us a little bit more about this, uh, how he's living in exile in Europe, in the Americas, then would have affected this, would have influenced his uh, thinking around these kinds of things. I think it would be, uh, thank you again, and, and uh, good evening, and uh, happy Heritage Month to everyone. Um, and let's now get down to serious work, now that we've finished with the dancing, which is a wonderful thing. And let's get back to our reading and understanding of our culture, and that is very important. And to do so, I'd like to invite Kunene in his own words, just a few lines, mm. so that it can set the tone of what we're talking about. This is from a collection that has been published by uh, the Department of Arts and Culture in a special series called Reprint of South African Classics Project. So um, it is stamped with the the Department of Arts and Culture and encouraging the reading and understanding of our language. Ise tulo samazwi. Kengoba abantu basuliwe. Akusho ukuti kufanele basulwe nange ngondo. Se loku benge suliwe nge ngondo. Bayo fisa ama siko abo. Bayo fisa abagwa ziyo. Oku nge milando yabo. Pase banga vumeli izizo zikove konke okuliku kukubo. Ukwe njalo kutetela ono pata pata bezizo. Batavu ze ema feni onke abo mtabo. Konke loko kubangwa ikuba. Bona abo mtabo. Sebe kekezela izizo eme. There's an English translation for that, but then again, uh, I can do that. But uh, in his own words, that's Mm. what uh, Kunene said. Well, we can't be celebrating Heritage Month if we're then going to say to you, uh, say it in English. I think the whole point of this is because we want to encourage each other to say, go find the works, get the English translation so that you, you can learn about this. So let's talk about some of the great works that he did. UNESCO had commissioned him to uh, look at the epic poem, as it's called, the uh, original 65,000 work, word works on Ushagaz. Tell us a little bit more about this and, and where it is now, because that's a very interesting story, because uh, appropriation is also something that we've seen and... Uh, not much credit is given. I think because of his commitment, he wrote every word of his of his collection of manuscripts in Isizulu. Uh, although he was living in exile for 34 years, he never wrote one single poem directly in English. I think it is defiance of the colonial rule that, that he was living in England in the world of Shakespeare. He wanted to establish the, uh, the, the presence 
of the culture of the African writing and thought system. So he defined the idea that um, he would write anything in English. So he wrote Emperor Shaka the Great and by him calling Shaka the Emperor because that's who he was. He was um, taking away the negative narrative that had been going away for centuries around Europe. And I think it was caused by, um, by the sheer um, shame that uh, a British well-trained uh, army had been defeated by the King Shaka. So he wrote the book, Emperor Shaka the Great, Ngesi Zulu. It's a full manuscript, it's available, Ngesi Zulu. And then UNESCO found out about that. And I said, well, we're interested in this. Can you translate? So he had to ask Tom a time from um, his leader, uh, Oliver Tambo, to take time so that he can uh, translate this. It's a huge, huge translation. And fast and forward Japanese, where we like, are now. Sorry to interrupt you, but just fast forward where we are now, because unfortunately we are running out of time. We've seen right. that it's going to become, uh, there's a production that is underway. I think it's going to be uh, on a free-to-air channel. Are you involved? Has Is his work being used? I just want to understand if you know, he's being celebrated. Well, I think that South Africans can look at it this way. Can any South African go to England and write a, 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 an epic drama on the Battle of Normandy? Mm. This is supposed to be left to the South African, to the indigenous people of this country, to be able to celebrate their own and interpret their understanding of their heroes in their own way. No one can ever do it the way the African, particularly Mazisi Kunene, because he has spent so much time doing it. We hear this, uh, we, we, that the production is going on, and Mazisi would say, Abulutolog, let them go and do it. And if they want to do it by appropriating a few lines here and there, the Emperor Shaka the Great manuscript mm. will re remain solid. So and final question, be, because I know Yeah, but I just want to say the mm -hmm. final thing. And I think that in a sense, whoever the producers are or the funders, it's an affront to a South African because Mazisi Kunene is a national poet laureate. So you cannot appropriate his work or his ideas without giving credit to the South African uh, poet laureate. I think for me, I just look at that way. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you, and which is also what I wanted to find out about the, the trust, the foundation, what it's doing to carry forth with his works. I know you found it, things like libraries, you're helping some schools. Uh, if you could just quickly tell us about that. Well, I think because I, pro I had promised him, like his partner, that I'd look after his work, I stopped doing uh, a lot of um, uh, business activities and us and I we focused on spending every money any mo uh, a lot of money on running the foundation for 13 years as a family it's a difficult one but we've achieved much because to date mm -hmm. we have uh, digitized 51,000 pages of unpublished work so we need serious support we need serious commitment we need South Africans to come and visit the museum people come from all over the world to visit the museum it's not just a small museum I think it's world-class the way we have carried it with and uh, thanks to the uh, board of trustees and thanks to my uh, uh, family who have given almost every penny to manage it. So, I mean, I'm very grateful to the Board of Trustees and the founding chairman, Andres Burton, um, John Chata, Rak Siahua, uh, Puti Tsugudu. Uh, those are the people who attend these board meetings without any board fees, by the way. In mm -hmm. fact, they donate towards it. And I invite South Africans to take a short left to come down to visit the Mazisi Kunene uh, Museum. Very quickly, where is that? It's at number eight, Devil Avenue in Durban, but you can find it on, on, on Google. You can find it um, on, 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 on its website. And actually something exciting has happened is that Google has come in and they would like to upload into a Google um, uh, Museum Arts and Culture. So uh, come and see it in its original and then um, and support it. It's fantastic news to hear. And thank you so much 
for speaking to us, sharing with us, uh, uh, educating us. Thank you very much, Matabo Gunena, founder of the Mazisi Foundation a Trust. And you've heard of the wonderful work that they're doing, digitizing the works of Mazisi Gunena, which was something uh, that we've been talking about, this heritage.